mean, if someone's going to get confused by everything just being called A, you could name them like the whole cast from Friends or Seinfeld or something like that, but is it really going to be extra confusing? I actually find that when it's just simple letters like everything's named A, so the first function in every single class is named A, it gets really confusing when you have multiple code paths and there's objects called A that are calling A, that have a function named A because it's an object from another class that's named A. I feel like that's personally more confusing, and it will slow people down, but again, it's, it's not going to prevent people entirely from doing it because you know maybe they'll just load up Ida and rename everything. And that's it's definitely a possibility. So I would say give them the least amount to work with. Well of course there's kind of capital I's and lowercase L's. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Th there's different attack and, and so in the black hat talk I talked about this where so if someone's reversing on a on a Mac, the default file system is case sensitive. So one way you could try and mess with someone, but this, this solely relies on the fact that maybe you know someone who's reversing your application has a case sensitive file system. If you name something capital I and lowercase i, they're gonna overwrite each other. And then it gets really annoying where everything is i's, everything's lowercase i's, there's some l's in there. That gets really annoying, but again, it, it only stops people to a point. And maybe by then they're already motivated enough to reverse engineer the whole application. Yeah, and my last question is like, um, you also mentioned about like sending back the registration code or something, mm -hmm. uh, how, I mean, is it considered like illegal or something to call, call home or something? You know? um, so I mean, that would definitely be something you might want to talk about in your terms of service. Um, it depends what you're sending back. Like if you're just sending back all their personal information so that you can then, you know, send them a cease and desist letter, be, a letter because you know their phone number, that's probably not good, I would suggest not doing that. If you're just sending back a registration key, or like you have to communicate with your server, you know, a unique user ID, just using the, the random Java one uh, to, to create one, that should be fine. But if, if you're doing anything funky, it should definitely be spelt out in a privacy policy uh, or in terms of service. And it shouldn't be anything that, um, let's just say, a good user reversed your application and saw what you're sending up to the server. Nobody should really be surprised. If they're being surprised, then that can be bad. Like, you don't want to shock your good users. You don't want to uh, try and stop pirates by hurting your real users. But, like, is the serial number considered something personal data and private information? Um, I would personally say you shouldn't send a serial number, because uh, then what happens if it's not over HTTPS? Well, someone can just sniff that. Now I have someone's serial number. Um, I don't think it's personally identifiable unless your database gets leaked. Maybe it is. It just depends on like what your schema is. Maybe you're doing like an MD5 of that, so you're just having the, the hashes and you can compare it to your own hashes. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a serial number. Like I said, it could be you know an integrity check of your actual file. Uh, there, there's a million di different ways to, to to basically do this problem. <laughs> It's possible. So I guess I, I would stage that under, um, and, and to so everyone who hasn't seen my actual talk, basically some reverse, uh, some entrepreneuring malware authors uh, basically embedded bad code. They, they injected an L file inside of a JPEG file. So if you were to file type that, it would just return that it's a JPEG. Uh, and then if you were to look at that in the viewer, it opens up because it's a JPEG. But what they end up doing is they end up extracting that L file and executing it off that image. Uh, so that's a really interesting technique but it's sort of a hack. Do you want to rely, like have your production code relying on a hack? Uh, what happens, you know, like, you're gonna to have to automate a process of injecting your new updated code into an image again. And then once one person figures it out, like yeah, it, it might hide from someone for a couple days, but it's, it's more of a hack, and I would say leave that to the malware authors, because you, it's something you probably shouldn't be doing in production level code. Um, it's probably gonna just come back to bite you. Like there might be a bug on someone's device while you're trying to extract something and you're just introducing a level of complexity that's not gonna stop reversers who are good. And it's probably just gonna be more interesting for them to be like, wow, I've never seen anyone do this. This is so strange. I really wanna document this process and make something that automates this for me. And it's probably just more of an interesting technique than something to do uh, in everyday production level code.
So I'm sure it's going to help, and it, it's, it's going to definitely be one of those uh, small group, large group problems. Uh, you own your phone. Your phone can be rooted. You can do anything you want to your phone, unless it's like they end up figuring out how to put like a glass case around your phone and not letting you touch certain buttons, or like there's no USB ports and you can't access the memory. It's, it's only going to slow people down. And once they figure out an automated process, it's going to be like, oh, okay, well, I'll just buy that application once, and then I'll just rip it off and I'll share it. Many people like pull it off the wire and they can't access it. I assume most people get it the way you said it, just pull it off the root uh, file system. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do a lot of people pull it off the wire somehow? Um, I mean, it's definitely possible. So uh, I'm not 100% versed in the way they're encrypting things. The way they've documented it was essentially that they're going to um, encrypt it per device. So pulling it off the device will be interesting, but definitely doable. So doing it over the wire would essentially be the same process. Um, you definitely could make like a crawler at some point, but again, this is it's going to be people are probably going to be trying to pirate paid applications more than they are free applications. Uh, so it's just an extra step for someone to try and make like an automated. I'm going to buy this, download it, and then try and like refund it really quickly. And the the amount of work it would probably take to do that, opposed to having an actual phone to just do this once, they're probably going to go the easy route just because it's easier. So here's a couple more resources. This is my Black Hat presentation. It goes into a lot of um, uh, like bytecode obfuscation techniques. It's actually a really gross font, I guess, for that. Um, I'll post these online. I can send you guys links and whatnot. Uh, there's actually also a really good uh, security and privacy talk that was done by a couple friends uh, from, not from Lookout, but from Google. We're friends with them. Uh, and they're on the Google security team. And they basically did a really interesting presentation on how to reduce your attack surface. Uh, and how to basically um, do similar things like this, uh, but basically from the perspective of they don't want you to be an application that people are being like exploiting. So like, don't request extra permissions. How can you properly protect things and just reduce that footprint of the tax base? Um, so that's about it. I mean, if you guys, we have plenty of beer, plenty of food, plenty of non-alcoholic drinks. Mingle. Feel free to talk to. Any of these guys that I'm trying to shine in the face, uh, they're pretty much on the team. A, a lot of lookout people are here, and yeah, let's collaborate, right? That's what it means for. <laughs>